This is the first in a video series breaking down Olivia Wilde's film Don't Worry Darling, starring Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. In part one, I examine the dominant theme of the battle of the sexes, order over chaos. This video contains spoilers, so if you are interested in seeing the film, then I recommend you watch it first and come back to watch this video. I highly recommend you watch this film multiple times, in fact. This breakdown is for those who are able to see beyond the illusion of reality. Don't Worry Darling is an Alice in Wonderland tale of a woman named Alice who awakens to the realization that she is in a simulation. The simulation is called the Victory Project, and it was built by a Jordan Peterson type character named Frank, played by Chris Pine. The men captured their wives and put them in the simulation without their knowledge or permission, so the men know where they are, but the women do not. Every day, the women play in this dream world, while the men leave to go to work in the real world in order to pay to live in this fake reality. It's not made clear where these men work. Critics and viewers have dismissed the film as a style over substance mess of a story, full of plot holes and unfinished business. However, there is a niche group of people who see through its superficial flaws to the underlying message, and this is who the movie is for. Those who are physically minded or logically minded will not understand the movie. Those who know something of how this reality works will. These are the chaos minded. It is my opinion that this film, much like Under the Silver Lake, was made for those with eyes to see. And it is a manifestation of consciousness. We live inside a shared, co-created dream within a dream that is generated by consciousness. At some point, consciousness split into duality, which is necessary for the physical world to exist. One thing is separate from another, and yet everything is connected to everything else. Think of it like a dream in which you are the dreamer, and even though your dream feels very real, and within that dream it appears that there are beings and objects separate from you, they are all connected to each other as one, and connected to you as the dreamer. In essence, the entire dream is a manifestation of your thoughts, primarily your subconscious thoughts, as they are manifested in order to raise your awareness of what is within to the conscious level. This is what's being shown to us in Don't Worry Darling. Overall, this is about raising Alice's subconscious to the conscious level. Understanding this is necessary in order to follow my breakdown of this film. Don't Worry Darling is a masterpiece in this sense because while it is an incomprehensible mess to the male-dominated left-brain viewer, it is clear perfection to the feminine right-brain viewer. While the film's overt theme speaks to the idea of a male-dominated simulated society, it simultaneously reveals the hidden truth that the feminine is quietly awakening to return to her rightful place. The duality is perfectly represented here and in a subtle, beautiful dance. One of the mantras of the film echoed within the simulation is order over chaos. Order and chaos must work together. When one tries to do away with the other, it only proves to resurface under the pressure. When you focus on the chaos, you will find the order within it and all the pieces of the story will fall together. What do I mean by this? Order is masculine and chaos is feminine. The director has stated that the idea of the film stemmed from the question of Trump's Make America Great Again and what does that actually look like? The script creates a perfect world where everyone can have a perfect life and, and put it back in the American 50s. Yes. yes. Why we need to go to back to 50s to have an appearance of a perfect world? Well, you know, when we were writing the script, it was um, at a time when there was a lot of, I thought, misplaced nostalgia for a better time in America. Um, it was during, you know, we were hearing very often, make America great again. And I questioned, what does this mean again? The superficial explanation is that it looks like the incels have captured the dominant woman and put her into a 1950s style simulation in order to maintain control over his life. 
The esoteric meaning behind the term maga is connected to the divine feminine as mag relates to magnetism, the feminine energy. This is also connected to the moon, Mary Magdalene, and Margaret, as we'll get into later. And they mean a time when women had very few rights, when anyone except white men had very few rights. The theme of the film is that it is an example of what would happen in the near future if incels took over and so the simulation is built around the 1950s ideology that the man is the breadwinner and the woman is the homemaker, reverting back to it being a man's world. The 1950s seemingly idyllic lifestyle gives the impression that men are dominant and women are forced to stay at home to serve at their beck and call. But this is merely a single, narrow-minded viewpoint of what this lifestyle represents. It's possible that Wilde used this as a device, as it is a widely accepted notion that this is what it means, just so she can focus your attention on the true main story. We assume that work is freedom and independence. We assume that being a homemaker is subservient, because that is what society today tells us. Do you believe everything you're told? Are you being manipulated by your system, like Frank manipulated the minds of those within his society? And uh, I, I think it's really interesting, this tension between iconography that is at once very um, seductive from an era that is itself very problematic. So the tension between something that you know is flawed, but you're still very drawn to. I do find it ironic how Alice, when she discovers that this reality is not what it seems to be, is eager to return to this horror show of a life in reality because it's real and leave behind this paradise because it's false. Even in the paradise, it cannot hide the lie. And so the lie is not tolerable. She would choose truth over a lie, even if it doesn't look so pretty. This film represents somewhat of an inversion to our reality in that the paradise is the simulation, and the horror show is the reality. Here, the horror show is the simulation, and reality is the paradise. We're not meant to slave away at hard labor in order to afford the paradise. We're meant to live in the paradise. The suppression of the feminine is shown when one of the women, Margaret, publicly expresses her fears that something is off about this place, and she is quickly silenced by the men. Frank says, what is the enemy of progress? And they repeat back, chaos. On the outside world, Frank is the cult leader of the incels. He's said to be a Jordan Peterson type character. Alice's husband, Jack, in the real world, listens to him all day because he's an unemployed bum while Alice works 18 hours a day as a surgeon. It makes no sense as to why Jack couldn't get a job when he needed to support Alice, but he could get one in order to keep her inside the simulation, which is why it seems logical that he works for the Victory Project because it's the only place that would hire him, thus keeping him enslaved to the project. Another symbol of the suppression of the feminine is the crushing of the egg. Alice realizes there's no yolk inside the egg, and she crushes empty shell after empty shell. No yolk in the egg represents that the feminine in the simulation are nothing more than empty shells. They aren't real. Everything is male-dominated. The thalamus in the brain is an egg-shaped organ. According to the Cleveland Clinic's website, your thalamus is your body's information relay station. All information from your body's senses, except smell, must be processed through your thalamus before being sent to your brain's cerebral cortex for interpretation. Your thalamus also plays a role in sleep, wakefulness, consciousness, learning, and memory. Considering that Alice is asleep or unconscious in the real world, and in the simulation she is tapping into her memory of her real life, the empty egg could also symbolize the thalamus being dormant. The etymology of thalamus is the receptacle of a flower, the inner chamber, sleeping room, hence figuratively marriage, wedlock. From Greek thalamos, inner chamber, bedroom, vault, vaulted building. The thalamus is in the middle of the brain wrapped in the fornix in the third ventricle. 
This is Sleeping Beauty in her glass coffin. This is the gold in the vault. Wilde uses the shot of a fried egg next to bacon as a transition device to show the repetitive nature of life inside the simulation. But it also represents the union of the masculine and feminine. Egg is feminine and bacon is masculine. Bacon comes from pig. Filthy men are referred to as pigs. And egg comes from hen and women are referred to as hens. Alice later attacks Frank at her dinner party, pointing out that all the food comes from him. The man provides the food, meaning there's no egg or feminine to produce the food. Even Frank's wife is named Shelley, representing the empty shell of the egg. She is a hollow representation of the feminine. She does Frank's bidding. The dinner party is a perfect example of the moment at which Alice rises up and challenges the male ego, Frank. Notice the framing on Frank and the framing on Alice is identical. They are equals in this moment. The rest of the film, they are never equals. Frank always kind of is the overlord over the rest of the characters. He's always kind of looming over them. He's larger than life. Is that why you went out there? To headquarters? He represents her masculine side. As Olivia Wilde states, at this point, they are equals, whereas before, she was suppressed and he was dominant. The suppression of the feminine is not about the rise of the incels or returning to 1950s male-dominated society. It is about suppression of the divine feminine within us and how that manifests outside of us in the world today. Despite the pretty picture of paradise, the women sensed something was off. The men fought to suppress the women's awakening by denying their experiences, drugging them, driving them to the point of insanity, and ultimately taking them out of the simulation if they did not conform, all of which demonstrated the lengths to which the men would go with their need to control. No one was allowed to question what the men do, where they go every day, what the Victory Project does, the nature of their reality, or why Margaret was shunned from society. Suppressing these questions showed how order suppressed chaos. Order was threatened by chaos, but the more chaos was suppressed, the more it was likely to blow. In the real world of Don't Worry Darling, the men who participated in the Victory Project did so because they felt oppressed by the women. This was an illusion, however, as the feminine wasn't oppressive in their real world, but rather the women became more masculine and the men more feminine in order to cope with the imbalance. While Jack spiraled into a void of depression and low self-worth, Alice worked for the two of them and came to resent him for it. Their real world was just as imbalanced as the simulated world, only on the opposite side of the scale. The dreary, depressive look of their real world is overtly masculine, while the cheery, colorful, and pretty look of the simulated world is overtly feminine. However, both worlds are male-dominated. The pronounced emphasis on positivity and perfection seems to go hand-in-hand hand with the idea of order. When Alice awakened to the truth that Jack put her in a simulation, she confronted him about it, and he told her that he did it for her because she was miserable. But that's a lie. He did it for himself. He lied to himself in order to justify what he did to her. But one thing he said was true. She was miserable working long days, and she was happy in the simulation. What she wasn't happy about was the lie and being controlled. It was her life, and he had no right to take it from her. Had these men truly wanted a perfect world, they never would have brought the feminine into it. But the men never wanted to live without the women. They didn't know how to balance the feminine with the masculine. The whole point of the simulation was to correct the imbalance of their real world so they could feel like men again. Oddly enough, their experience in the simulated world didn't seem to have a positive effect on them in their real world. This is exemplified in Jack's increasingly scruffy appearance and his lack of empathy for his wife, whom he had chained to a bed in a comatose state. Wilde's use of film techniques to give the film its surrealist qualities is what loses the logical viewer and captures the chaotic viewer. 
These techniques are intended to disrupt the viewer's experience so that they themselves lose hold on reality. The audience themselves feel like they're losing touch with reality. And we used um, magical realism in certain parts. We used um, you know, all of the tools that narrative filmmaking offers in order to play in the world of subtext, that we can explore human emotion like anxiety and illustrate that. There are one of three paths the viewer can take trying to follow the narrative on a purely logical level, following Alice on her journey on a chaotic level, and allowing one's subconscious to put the story together, or a combination of the two. No matter how idyllic the presentation of their fake reality, the women knew something was off, much like how we sensed something was off about our world. This is the feminine intuition that the logical mind cannot comprehend, this intuition is what detected the imbalance and the men tried to suppress it with logic. Alice too tried to suppress her intuition, but it manifested in several forms, which I will get into later. These were reminders she left for herself that triggered her awakening, such as the plane, Margaret, and the song she kept humming. When she trusted her intuition, trusted what she knew to be true, the truth started to come out and chaos erupted in the Victory Project. This chaos was not something that could be controlled. The simulation failed to restore the balance. Instead, it magnified the toxic masculine. In a world dominated by one point of view, there is nothing to maintain the balance. If one side is suppressed or inverted, it will ultimately flip. No matter what these men do in either world, there is no getting rid of the chaos or feminine that threatens their control. In the end, the feminine killed the masculine, but when Alice reached the tower before her escape from the simulation, she embraced an apparition of her husband, signifying the unification of the masculine and feminine, which needs to happen in order for us to exit out of our false reality. For underneath the frustration that led these men to establish a false reality lies a deep longing for genuine connection with their partners. All they were after was love. There is much I have to say about this fascinating film, so please stay tuned for part two coming next week. If you like this video, please show your support for my channel. Like, share, subscribe, comment, contribute. Contributions over $15 will receive a link to the Johnny Depp Dark Shadows material, so please be sure to include your email address. Kindly visit my website, subscribe to my backup channels, join the Discord group. All links are in the description box below. Thanks for listening, hope you're having a great day. Bye for now.